respectful of everybody's time and uh, make certain that we, we are finished at the, at the appropriate time. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. This is um, becoming a person of excellence. This is week one This of six weeks. We will be on every week, every Tuesday between now and February 23rd from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And we thank you for, for joining us. During, the, uh, during this time, if anybody has any comments or questions that they have, please feel free to speak up. I'm going to be, today's uh, going to be a little bit different than the rest of the uh, sessions. This session is, is a very personal one it's because I'm, I'm going to really be talking to you and for you. And uh, because I think it's important that as we think about becoming a person of excellence, I think we need to understand what it is and how it is of those influences in our life. What are the things that, that have helped us and propelled us forward? And what are those things that have held us back? And a lot of times, I really believe that, that whatever we do in life, our mind and our attitude sets the tone and the pace for what and how we do things. You know, my, my former mentor, the late Zig Ziglar, you know, he said, your attitude will determine your altitude. And I really believe that. I think that if we don't believe we're going to get somewhere, we won't. Uh, if we believe that this is going to happen no matter what, I'm going to persevere, I'm going to stay determined, I'm going to be working through and moving through it, we'll get there. So becoming a person of excellence to me is, is a lifelong journey. But it starts with your attitude. It starts with a belief. It starts with an understanding in myself that I can do this, that, yeah, I've, I've messed up in the past. Maybe I'm at a point right now where, where life is, is, is really challenging, but it doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean it stops. It just means that you're at a point where in your development to becoming a person of excellence, you got to move through some things. And, and, and maybe, and I really believe everything that we do in life also is preparation for the next step. And I think that, that, that you have to look at yourself and say, okay, I, 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 I may not be exactly where I want to be, but you know what? I can get there. I can get there and I can work through it. And that's what the next six weeks is all about. Tonight is we're going we're, we're gonna to kick off and we're going to talk about you. I'm going to talk for a, a little bit here about some things that I think that some, some habits that we form in becoming a person of excellence. I, I, I I think that we are all creatures of habit in our own way. But we can reprogram and redesign and restructure. And, and we need to understand what it is and how it is that is influencing us to, to get to where not only we are, but where we want to be. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, you. Next week we're going to be... I've, I've got to put the glasses on here. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, person of excellence success keys. Each one of us have our own keys that we live by. We may not fully see it. We may not fully understand it. But we're going to talk about that next week. And we're going to help shape and prepare you for those personal uh, excellence keys to help move you forward and move you through it as, 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 as you go through different stages in your life. Then I, I really believe we all have activators. We all have things in our life that something's going to hit us, something's going to trigger, and it activates us to move into action. And here's where we, we focus back and pull back during this week and look at the mind, look at the attitude, because that's what activates us as a person of excellence to go forward. That's what moves us. That's what shapes us. Then we're going to look at the personal five plus four success circle influencers. Now, you've never heard that before. That's, that would be my guess. The, the five plus four success circle influencers. And that's because that's coming out in my new book. And so I, I want to show you what the anchors are in your life. You, we all have four anchors. We have to have those four anchors. But we also, within those anchors, we have opportunities and we have success circles that we work through and we, we live through and we operate through every day and how those anchors influence us as we walk through and how it helps shape us to become a person of excellence. And then I want to talk about week five, your personal life focus. 
on becoming a personal person of excellence. And each week is going to build on, on the last week. And then when we get into week six, we're going to really just top it off with talking about and moving you through and, and, and ready to become that person of excellence that you were created to be. So that's the focus. That's the things we're going to be looking at and moving through. And through it all, I want you to, I, I want you to keep this question in mind. Okay, this, this is the question I want you to, we're going to come back to it later tonight. But to become a person of excellence, I need to what? To become a person of excellence, I need to what? We'll come back to that a little bit later. But if you're like most people, you are aiming to be successful in life. Most people do not aim to be unsuccessful in life. Most people don't get up in the morning and say, boy, I hope I do really bad today. Or they get up in the morning or they go to work and they say, you know what, I'm going to really do a lousy job today at work. We're just not programmed that way. Most people, when we get up, we are aiming to be successful. The problem is we don't know how to fully activate ourselves to be that successful and turn into that person of excellence. So you want to be excellent in everything you do. Now, I have to tell you, I'm going to drop back. When I was in high school, I wasn't exactly the kind of students that teachers liked. Matter of fact, I think, I think I passed many grades because the teacher did not just want me back in her classroom for another year. But I didn't do my homework. I did badly on my examinations. Uh, I was the class clown, the class cut up, and I was pretty much unmotivated when it came to school. However, after a while, I realized that, that this wasn't who I wanted to be. You see, we all have a choice. Who do we want to become? What do we want to do? How do we become that person we want to become? This wasn't the life I saw myself leading, but yet I was there. See, my attitude was I didn't care. Yet there was a part of me in my mind that did care, and there was a battle going on. And a lot of times we, that happens to us in life. A lot of times becoming, we stop ourselves and block ourselves from doing certain things. And one of those is becoming the best possible person of excellence that we can become. We get to a point and we stop. We get to a point and we stop. We get to a point and we say, you know what? I don't know, nobody else that I know has done this and been successful at it, so I better stop. And so we do, we, we block ourselves. People around me as I was growing up, I noticed were judging me. And I had enough of being in the back of the class. And I decided to turn everything around from that point on. And it's amazing what happens when you do that. It's amazing when you tell your mind, you program your little RTD2 up here to say, you know what, instead of the negative and the garbage and the junk, let's turn it towards the positive. Let's turn it towards what I can accomplish. Let's turn it what I can become. Let me be excellent in what I do. So after 30 years of, of striving for personal excellence, uh, working with top people in their fields, observing top people in their fields, I realized that there are some universal habits that enable people to achieve excellence. And I want to talk about that. And as we talk about it, I want you to think about that question I asked you. Okay, to become a person of excellence, I need to what? Aristotle put it this way. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit, a habit, something we can control, something we can take and say, you know what, I can do this, I can become this. These habits aren't something that you're born with. They are habits that anyone like, like you and me can cultivate. Just as the late Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly successful people will help anyone become highly effective, these habits of highly excellent people will help anyone become excellent. Excellent in what you do and who you are. So here they are. Have the end in mind. We start with that. Have the end in mind. This is the same habit as Stephen Covey's first habit, and it's with very good reason, because everything starts with the end. Think about that. I'm going to the store. 
I don't think about, I need to put shoes on, I need to put clothes. I think about, I'm going to the store. And I think about what I'm gonna do after I go to the store. You've got the end in mind, the goal or the vision you want to fulfill. That's what we start with. That's what we work with. That's, that's what we understand. If you don't know what the end is, then there's no way of getting there. You know, I'm sitting in an airport and waiting to fly from Pittsburgh to Chicago, and the pilot and the co-pilot are sitting there, and the co-pilot turns to the pilot and says, how are we going to get there to Chicago? Looking at the wind speeds, looking at the direction, looking at the temperature, looking at the weather, what they're predicting in Chicago, what it is here in Pittsburgh. And the pilot turns to the co-pilot and he says, well, I don't know. I just figured we'd go up in the air and fly around. I, vic I figure eventually we'll get there. We do that sometimes too, to ourselves and in our lives. You need to know what is the end that you want to reach in order to get there. A person of excellence starts with the end in mind, develops the habit that no matter what I'm doing, no matter what it is that's been presented before me, what's the end result? What do I want to achieve out of this? In business, many times you talk about what is it and where is it that we want to end up. And then you decide what are the steps we're gonna to need to get there. With your family, with my, our daughter, was going to college, we talked about what are the end steps? How are we going to, how are you going to get through that first year, that second year, that third year to get to that fourth year? What are the things that, you, that you're going to need? So, you see, we all have, I really believe, we all have seeds of greatness inside of us. We just have to cultivate them. Hence, it's critical that you form clear goals of what exactly you want. So again, to become a person of excellence, I need to, I want to. What is it that you want? What is the end of what you envision? What is the end of that? And, and, and what are your personal goals and your dreams for yourself, for your own personal excellence? Now, each one of us is going to define that a little bit differently for ourselves, and that's okay. That's the way it should be. We can work from, 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 from certain habits that are kind of foundational, but we're going to all shape them a little differently. We all live in homes, but chances are our homes are not exactly alike. We all have different thoughts. We may want to accomplish the same thing, but we're going to go about it a little differently. Personally, I have a vision board where I have my dreams plastered all over it. I know Yvette does too. I saw it uh, yesterday. These dreams include developing the personal excellence into one of the top personal excellence blogs. That's what I want. I want to I wanna have the top person of excellence blog in the, in the world. That's a, that, that's, that's a goal. And I'm not going to get there if I don't see it, if I don't think it, if I don't believe it. What is it that you want? What's driving you? What's your desire to becoming that person of excellence? I also have a desire to have a school, to have an academy, and have an international academy. And that's what's behind me here, the, 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 the leadership academy. We're developing that. We're putting that to, into place. We're putting that into place not only here, but we're putting that into place in Africa, in India, in Haiti, in Pakistan, in Japan, in Indonesia. We're putting that into place. Where is it that you want to be? What's your person of excellence that's, that's driving you? What is it and how is it that you want to get there? I want to do, I want to do speaking to tens of thousands of people. I want to do seminars. I want to hit the bestsellers list with my books and so on. You see, I believe that a person of excellence can't afford to dream small. I believe they have to dream big. These dreams remind me of what exactly I want and drive me to go forward every day. They really do. I don't, you know... I don't look at the day when I get up and say, oh my gosh, what am I going to do today? I look at the day and say, wow, God's given me this amount of time to get so much accomplished in the day. 
And now I got to get to work at it. Do what you love. Do what you, you know, the old saying, do what you love and the money will follow. You know, when you do something you love, it, it, it's like you have unlimited fuel that keeps you going day after day. It's like you don't, you never run out of gas. Yeah, you get tired. Yeah, you run down a little bit, but you still got that drive and you're still moving and you're still pushing and you're still working. The hunger to excel is, is just greater than doing anything else. The motivational speaker, Les Brown, talks about the hunger that's inside of us, the hunger that we must go after and we must reach. We, and, and you have to. To be that person of excellence, you have to. You see, every day I'm endlessly driven to help others succeed in reaching their goals because that's what I believe in. I believe that part of me being a person of excellence is to help you become a person of excellence. And when it's, it's growth. We're all growing. We're, we're all moving through it together. Helping people grow and live their best life is the one thing I know that I want to be doing for the rest of my life because it's important. What is it for you as a person of excellence? What is it that you love to do? You know, You've heard it before, and when I do a program, a presentation, many times I start out this way. If time and money were of no importance, what would you be doing? Second question, why aren't you doing it? What's holding you back besides you? Well, Tony, it's money. Well, it's no. What's holding you back? You can find a way to work around the money. You can find a way to work around some situations. And when it really comes down to it, it's, it's our little RTD2 that says, you know what? You're not good enough. You know what? You've never done. Why are you trying to? Because what others have said to us. Other people will hold you back unintentionally or intentionally just by what they say and do. You got to be careful with that. But what is it that you love to do? If you're not sure what your passion is at this time, then what is something that, that, that you're most eager to try at the moment? Because sometimes as you're developing that pursuit and that passion of excellence, you're going, to, you're going to be challenged to try different things, move in different directions, understand and see things in different ways. If you can choose to do anything, what will it be? What would you choose right now? Again, if time and money were of no importance, what would you be doing? Second question, why aren't you doing it? Why? Why? Your love and interest are fuels that will drive you towards excellence. These things will push you. If, if, if you give them enough time and you work them hard enough, you'll get there. But you have to work harder than anyone else in some cases. You see, I don't know of anyone who has achieved excellent results who hasn't worked hard for them. Who hasn't, it just doesn't, you don't wake up one morning and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go run a, a company. And boom, there you go. It takes time. It takes years. It takes blood, sweat, and tears. I don't know of any championship team in any sport that came to the playing field and the coach said, hey, guess what? It's Super Bowl Sunday. How did we get here? Here we are. Let's go out and let's just have fun and play the game. Many times, it's years of preparation. It's years of struggle. It's years of planning new plays. It's years of deciding what it is and how it is that this player is going to be best in this situation. What are you best in? What's your best situations? What is it? Where do you excel? Where, do you, where are you excellent? In your mind, in your mind right now, as you're sitting there and as you're listening, what are you excellent at doing? And it's not egotistical. It's just an honest appraisal of what it is that I am really good at. A big component of excellence is hard work. It is. It's sheer, unadulterated hard work. And the first way to start that hard work is to get it set in your mind. This is what I'm going to achieve. This is what I'm going to accomplish. This is what I'm excellent at. And now I'm going to go do it. See, we can streamline processes. We, we can. We can choose effective strategies and, and, and steps. But ultimately, the hard work will still have to come. We can plan, we can design, we can develop, we can do everything we want to do, but until somebody says, okay, it's time to start doing it, nothing's going to happen. 
You can plan, you can strive, you can design, you can develop, you can look at everything that you want in your life. But until you say it's time to take that step, nothing will happen. And that's just a fact. Fortunately, if you're doing what, you're lo what you love, work won't even be work at all. Yeah, it's going to be tiring, it's going to be frustrating, it's going to be challenging, but you're going to love every second of it. This year, uh, since I set up the Tony Richards Leadership Academy, I have spent countless hours, including weekends, months, and years in building up the business to get us to this point. And all of these will pay off in their own way. And that's the great thing about it when you become a person of excellence because you know that no matter what, it's going to pay off. And it may not, you may not see the payoff, but you know what? You may be putting your excellence into someone else or through them in, in mentoring them and teaching them and supervising them. And that may pay off through them years later, years after you're gone. Now, I'm not saying that you should abandon all social life because that defeats the purpose. I'm not saying that at all. However, you will have to dedicate yourself to making yourself and your business and your excellence a success. You will. You have to. So make use of every minute that you have. See, we all have 168 hours in a week. No more, no less. We all get 168 hours. Every moment counts. People of excellence know that time is highly valuable. They know that no matter what I do, no matter how I do it, no matter how I see it, I've got to move through it. I've got, I've got so much infinite amount of time to get there. Hence, I'm always making sure that I'm maximizing every moment. I'm a stickler for time because time is all I have. And so if there's a meeting, this meeting at seven tonight, I'm, I'm ready, I, I gotta be there. I gotta know that I'm ready and to go at seven. Because if I don't, I've lost some time, but I've also taken time away from you. And, I, and we can't afford to do that. So a person of excellence says, okay, what is it and how is it that I can maximize that moment of time that I have right now, that I have right now. If I'm commuting over a distance, I, I, I pick up uh, a, a podcast, an uh, audible. My, my whole uh, iPhone is loaded with, with books on, on uh, audible. And I'm constantly listening to, to, to books. If I'm, if I'm waiting for a friend, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do something while I'm waiting for them. It, it, it uh, and, 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 if, if I have to take some extra few seconds to make certain that I'm maximizing what it is that I need to do, a person of excellence says, okay, let me, let me do that. L let me look at it and how it will, I can best relate and yet how I can best be most effective and productive. And I'm not talking here about money necessarily. I'm talking about you because sometimes we go to bed at night and we lay down and we think about our day and we think about all those moments we've lost. And we have to minimize those. Now, I'm not saying you don't take a step back and, and relax and, and, and enjoy life as well, but sometimes I know of several people that take too much time and in, in, in relaxing too much and they're losing out and they're frustrated and they don't understand why they're not getting any better. Understand that making use of every moment also refers to knowing when to rest and when to rejuvenate. Because we have to. We have to. This helps us walk the, the mile a little, a little faster, the path a little stronger, and the understanding of what it is for us to become excellent at what we do. So then we need to take action to achieve our results. We need to understand what that is. Living, living a life of excellence means being a proponent of action, taking action. Many people often say the sky is the limit. Well, my personal philosophy is the sky is not the limit. You are the limit. 
You will decide what the limit is in the long run, whether you'll do it knowingly or whether you'll do it psychologically, you'll put the limit on yourself. John Maxwell has a, a one of is the the twenty one effective, uh, what is it the twenty one unrefu uh, what is it uh, if at the twenty one, um, irref not irrefutable, pardon you're you're on mute. You're on mute. Um, I can't remember what it is now. The twenty one, um, well it's 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 the laws of leadership basically. And one of his laws is the law of the lid. And basically the law of the lid means that we have a lid and we, we keep hitting it. We go this far, we understand where we are and we keep hitting the lid. And that's what we do with our excellence. See, in our minds, we've, we've placed a, a ceiling right here. We've placed a lid on ourselves, and we're, we're growing and we're doing things and we're moving in a direction and everything else. And bam, we, we hit the top and we stop. And, and, and as a person of excellence, we have to know that, you know what? We have to keep going. We have to push through it. We, 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 whatever we do or don't do will determine how much we can grow and achieve. We have to understand that. If we want to grow and achieve great results, we need to take the equivalent actions to reach the results we want. Are you taking those actions? Do you know, do you understand what it is and how it is what I need to do. Are you willing to take action on becoming a person of excellence? Are you willing to stop looking in the rearview mirror of your life and start living in the moment of your dreams and your destiny? You know, someone said to me one time, because I did that, I lived a lot of my life looking, looking back and regretting at one point in my life. And somebody said to me, you know, Tony, when you look in the rearview mirror of a car, you only get this much of a view. But when you look ahead of you, look, look, what's, look what the possibility is. And that's what I say to you as a person of excellence. Don't worry about the past. It's back there. We learn from it. When we learn from it, look at what we have going forward. Look at what and how we can develop ourselves to become even stronger or better. So we continuously upgrade ourselves. We have to. We have to. We, we, learning never stops. I don't care what age you are, learning never stops. I will always be a perpetual student of some type because I'm just so fascinated. And there's so much out there that, that it, and there's just not enough time. So there is always something we can do to become better, to become stronger. We may have great skills and knowledge today but no matter how great they may be, our skills need to be continuously developed. Never stop learning. A person of excellence says, you know what? I'm going forward with this. I'm not stopping. I can't afford to. Excellent people are always learning. They're always reading. They're exposing themselves to new knowledge, new people, new context, developing their skills. What are you sharpening? What are you sharpening out there today? I have a goal that I have practiced for years that is no matter how big or how small, I must strive to learn one new thing a day. And I struggle sometimes because I look at the clock and it's like 11, 50, 58 or 54 or whatever it is, and I go, gosh, I, I haven't learned that new thing today. So what I've learned is to, to calm down a little bit and say, okay, I need to learn seven new things this week regardless what day it is. I need to at least learn seven new things this week. And I think, I'm thinking seven new things, 52 weeks, that's 364 new things a year. And if I continue to do that all my life, that gives me the opportunity and the possibility to really excel in, in many different ways. So if, you, if, you've, uh, if you played role-playing uh, games before, you know that the characters need to be leveled up to get stronger and progress to the next level. Likewise, we need to always be leveling ourselves up to achieve excellence. What's that next level that you want to get to? Where is it and how is it that you're going to get there? Who's going to help you get there? A person of excellence also knows that they need help getting there. But they need the right help. You have to be very careful because 
You know the old saying, you're judged by the company you keep? You want to be careful that you got the right people. And, 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 and I'm real careful when I coach people in, 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 in saying this, but some t look at the people that you're, that, 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 that the, the, your friends, look at the people that you, that you associate with. Are they moving you to where you need to be? Are they helping you and they progressing you or are they holding you back? It's good to have friends and if you have friends in all different categories, that's wonderful. But when it comes to you being that person of excellence, you wanna make sure you're associating yourself with the right people in the right environment, people that are gonna help you and push you and drive you and motivate you and, and, and to help you to feel your determination and your passion to move you forward. Ask for feedback. A person of excellence knows that no matter how much we try to improve, we have blind spots. It's like driving in a car, you know? You, you got the side view mirrors, the rear view mirrors, even through, through all of that. Once in a while, you know, you drive and all of a sudden a car comes up and you didn't even see it. It was in your blind spot. You know, blind spots are things about ourselves that we don't necessarily recognize. And we don't know how to improve on them unless we have others help us. Asking for feedback is one of the fastest and most effective ways that we can improve. I, I think it's, it's, it's important and I try to, in everything I do, I make it a point to gather feedback. An example, when I was in my previous job, I would ask my COO, my board chair, and peers for feedback on how I could improve. You know, the, the former mayor, Ed Koch, used to walk around the streets of New York City, stopping people and saying, how am I doing? How are we doing? What do, what do we need to do what is it that, that, that the city can do for you? What is it that I can do for you? So with my friends, sometimes I would have a random feedback session and I would tell them, how can I do things better? You see me, you know me. What is it and how is it that I can be more effective in helping and becoming more excellent in what I do? Strive for the best in what you do. That's what people of excellence do. There's one final habit tonight that I wanna discuss that will help you to become a person of excellence, and that is to strive to be the best in what you can do. No one's going to achieve excellence if they aim for average or mediocrity. No one is. When I was a kid, my uncle in Wisconsin we were visiting up in Wisconsin one day and, and they had a big field in front of them and we were hitting golf balls and it was getting late at night. And he said to me, he asked me what I wanted to do in life. And I must have been, I don't know, 12 or 13. And he said, no, what do you really want to do? He said, look up at the sky and, and you've heard variations of this. Look up at the sky and look at, look at, find a star. He said, now go beyond that star and find another one. He said, that's, what's, that's the one I want you to shoot for in your life. And if you don't make it, you're going to fall somewhere between that first star and that second one, and you're going to become more excellent in whatever you do. And that stayed with me. And so that's what I say to you tonight, is find two points. Find those, so go out and look at the stars tonight, if, if they're out there in the sky where you live. And look at, find one, and then find one further away. And, and understand that, you know what, no matter what I do, if I'm going to really become excellent in what I do, I'm going to, I'm going to strive for that furthest one. And even if I, do, if I come halfway to hitting it, look how much further I'm going, to be, I'm going to go. And look how much more excellent I'm going to become because I tried, because I kept going. Excellence comes from aiming for the top and being the best at what I do. Again, this is not egotistical or, or walking over others to get there. It means you have a belief in yourself and it means that you have strength and you have the attitude that I'm gonna accomplish this. This is to be the best that you can be at all levels. You'll only achieve great results when you set high standards for yourself. 
You know, the late L. Davis, the owner of the Oakland Raiders, the former Oakland Raiders, was asked one time, when you run around the Oakland Coliseum, you know, there was the black and silver, the signs all over the stadium that said commitment to excellence, commitment to excellence. And he was asked one time by a reporter, he said, Mr. Davis, the, the signs all over the Oakland Coliseum, commitment to excellence, he said, why are they there? He said, are, are, are they to let the fans know that the Raiders are committed to excellence? And Al Davis said, yeah, well, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. And he said, well, is that to kind of intimidate the opposing team? Because you got that black and silver and... and is, and he said, yeah, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. And he said, well, that must be then for the team. So the team knows they're committed to excellence. And L. Davis said, yeah, that's part of it, but it's not all of it. And he said, well, the reporter said, I don't understand. And L. Davis said, well, it's really simple. Before the fans can know, before the opposition can know, before the team can know, the individual must know. The individual must know that they are committed to excellence and no matter what they do or how they do it. It was on the team bus, on the team plane, when the team would travel, when they'd get to the hotel, on their beds there were little placards, and it was the commitment to excellence. As L. Davis said, it starts here. And if I can get you thinking that I am committed to be the best that I can be, that I can be the most excellent at whatever I do, you're gonna become that. One way or another, we are going to win individually first, and then as a team. And that's what I want to say to you tonight. Becoming that person of excellence, you have to win individually first. These habits have helped me to achieve a sense of excellence in my life in certain areas. As long as all of us practice and practice and practice them like a team, we will achieve excellent results. We may not win the Super Bowl, but if we win what we have set out to do and to become the best of excellence that we can become, we're gonna win. We are going to win. We're gonna help. We're gonna win by helping others. You know, I really believe this. There's probably a kid down the street, each one of us, that he's watching you. He or she is watching you. And they're 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 emulating you in certain ways. And you know the old saying, if everybody was just like me, what kind of world would it be? What kind of world will it be and would it be if, if you didn't practice and subscribe to being the best and the most excellent person that you can become? What's that doing to your children? What's that doing to your spouse? What's that doing to your friends, to your work co-workers, to the people that, that you deal with every day or on different levels? If I'm not believing and taking care and saying I'm going to be the most excellent that I can be today and live that every day, every 168 hours. So if you're ready, let's take these steps together and let's work to become the best that we can be in becoming a person of excellence. But I warn you, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's worth the journey. It really is. And so... As you are sitting there, and I asked you at the beginning, the question is, to become a person of excellence, I need to. I'm going to give you homework for next week because it's going to lead in to what we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about the success keys. The success keys are critical steps that, that you need to take, but they're going to be unique to you. But in order to understand and develop the success keys, I have to understand that to become that person of excellence, I need to do what? What is it? Some people use a, um, an accounting T, you know, and put the pluses and minuses. And some people say, okay, to be the best I can be, I need to do this. And then I need to eliminate this. Some people just say, you know what? No, I'm just going to write down those areas that, 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 that I need to work on. But we're going to start out next week by talking about some of these areas because it's important that as we begin this journey and as we take the next step in this journey of becoming a person of excellence, we have a strong understanding of who and what we are, what we want to be, 
and what we're becoming. What we want to be and what we are becoming, if we're not careful, can be two different things. And that will derail you on your journey to becoming a person of excellence. So I want to make sure that you are looking at where I want to be and what I'm becoming and that they're fusing together. And, and what will help fuse that together are the success keys. So I'm going to stop here now. I'm going to ask if anybody has any comments or any questions because I want, again, my focus, my purpose, and my goal is going back from my, my old mentor, Zig Ziglar, the way to succeed is to help enough other people get to where they want to be. I want to help you to become that person of excellence. So I'll open it up if there's any comments or, or thoughts or questions. Don't forget to unmute yourself if, if there are. Well, um, I'll, I'll talk if no one else will. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for that today. That is, um, that was, you know, something I definitely needed to hear. Um, a lot of these things over the last year, you know, I've been on my own uh, growth journey. And I, I think, you know, just listening to what you're saying, a lot of the things I've kind of started to put into play. Um, just as you're saying, you know, always trying to grow, always working on yourself. And for me, I think it's hard for me to help other people if I can't look inside and be that change that I want other people to be. Yeah. And so that has been the start of um, my journey. And um, love that you're having this because it just adds to that. Um, you know, I used to be a Netflix junkie. I would sit, I could sit on a weekend and watch Netflix from, you know, day in and day and um, one of the big things, you know, when I started my journey is just starting to surround yourself with people, like you said, people that have the same goals and are, are moving you toward that direction. And in doing that, I, you know, I, I kind of started copying them. They were working on themselves, their personal growth. And, you know, every person I talked to, it ends up here I am again and, and uh, uh, another this is personal growth but you know instead of watching Netflix like you say audiobooks I'm, I'm watching spending time on developing myself how can I improve myself and um, you know these are just great points to listen to I love audiobooks as well I'm, and I'm listening to those like you say I think it's just time I feel and I don't know, it was when I hit that halfway part of my husband, I was having a midlife crisis, but you, you know, you do, you think back and you said, I had so many opportunities to make a difference. I feel as if I did not utilize the time that God gave me to do the things that I wanted to do. I mean, I, I think I help, as a nurse, you, you help people, but it was, I think, being more intentional yeah. on um, who I, I want to help and what I want to help. And so um, I just want to say thank you for for this because I, I think it's right on target with what I need to do, and um, I looks like I've been invited to some more successful people, so I'm surrounding myself with more people. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I, I, I thank you, Yvette, and, and and I think you're right. And you know what I'd like to do is is since since we we have a a, a, a small group, an, an intimate group here, let's take it just a minute, if you would. Because you're right, this is now, these, these, you know, these are experts sitting here uh, all over the country and all over the world and looking and, and, uh, and, and sharing and, and developing and growing. So why don't we just take a minute, each one of us, and just introduce yourself and, uh, you know, say what, uh, what you would like to say. Uh, but if you would just keep it to like a minute or two, that would be great. So... Yvette, is there anything else that you would like to say? No, I'll, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Yvette, and I live here in Las Vegas, and um, I'm a nurse by trade. Been a nurse for about seven years. And started my own health coaching business. I've been doing that for about a year and a half, and through my journey, you know, this is where I really started my own personal development, growth, and um, leadership. Just finished the John Maxwell certification and the Jack Canfield certification, so. I'm kind of using those as a medium to um, really be able to, to change the world and make a bigger difference um, in people's lives. So thank you for having me, and I look forward to, to engaging with you all. If, if you would, I'm just going to ask you to do one more thing, put you on the spot one more time. 
if you would if you would talk about your your book club, uh, and uh, I think it's important because if anybody is interested in in a tremendous leadership book club, um, Yvette does one weekly, and if would you please uh, just tell everybody about it? Yeah, I, we I, we've been doing this book club for um, I don't know God, it's been since I don't know June, but we've covered the Jack Canfields. We've used the success principles. We cover about one to two chapters. We make it really quick. It's a Zoom where you can zoom in. Um, if you can't make it, you know, people listen. I record all of them and put them into like a little separate private Facebook group. But um, I just absolutely love the principles. We we want it. We want it quick. We know for people, and so we just kind of have been going through his whole book. If you know, there's 64 principles in there, and we're almost at the end of that book. But we're gonna pick another book, and we're gonna just keep going through that. But it is a personal development book club and and again i started that as a journey for myself but as i started going through i'm like man there are other people who want to grow with me because this is you know great information and so yeah. that was my way one to keep myself accountable because i could never finish a book you know and that was my way it's like if i see i'm going on live and i'm gonna do it <laughs> i have to show up and now wow it's been a little almost a year now and when when does it meet uh it's Saturday uh, Pacific time. It's 10 o'clock, I think 1 o'clock Eastern time. And like I said, it's just 30 minutes. We just zoom in. And, and if you want a link, I can send you the, the uh, Facebook link. But the recording is a place there. So even if you can't attend, you can at least go back and listen to the uh, the lessons that we, we have in it. But it's, it's been a great. I've, I've loved the discussions, but more so just love growing yeah. the information that we're having for us. Yeah, great. If anybody can, like like Yvette said, it's it's thirty minutes on Saturdays, but it is well worth the thirty minutes. We uh, pretty much really try to stick to that. Some of the little chapters are shorter than that, so we get yeah. through a little bit quicker. But it really is. Um, we we know everybody is busy, <laughs> so we really try to make it really, uh, you know, get to the point And you know, what do we learn from there? But but big the bigger thing is, what actions are we going to take? with it so it's not that we're just taking it it's like we we're challenging we had a two dollar uh complaint jar that we've had um we've, we've implemented it until we were using uh i don't know if you guys you probably have the e plus r equals o the whole 100 percent accountability formula mm -hmm. and so we all had our little complaint jars two dollars and and every month you know at the end of the month we um donate that to charity so that was <laughs> One of our little ways of yeah. how are we going to keep them complaining yeah. and black complaining and stuff. So we're just really trying to implement and just trying to be better versions of ourselves each day. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Will? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I was, I just want to tell you a quick uh, story. When I was a kid, uh, I was pretty much like you, Tony. I uh, didn't care to learn in school. I, I always uh, threw my books in a locker and went home uh, empty handed. And then my uh, mom and my sisters got mad at me for not doing my homework. And But when I moved out to Oregon, uh, I went to college out there. And uh, uh, my first uh, two months, I had uh, pretty good uh, grades on my report card. Uh, I started learning. Well, well, I did think I had a higher IQ. I thought uh, I thought I was pretty dumb and stupid, but uh, uh, see, it turned out that I see that I'm a lot smarter than what I thought I was, and, and uh, uh, I did all kinds of hard labor jobs in my life. I did have no education and really uh, successing myself uh, in getting a good paying job or anything. And, and I always I had a heart of my life, and, and uh, uh, but uh, when I met you, Tony, and then uh, we started hanging out and and uh, doing a lot of different things like eating out at Chinese restaurants and <laughs> help you eventually help you make coffee and all that. And then he taught me into uh, uh, taking a, a class of being a pastor, so. I thought I'd try and go for it because about five years ago, I uh, I tried taking courses to do that, and I didn't get no help from anybody at all. 
yeah, yeah, no, this through uh, evangelism, I was gonna uh, try and become a pastor through them, but uh, but then there's a lot of uh, rules and regulations you have to go by uh, before you can be one. And uh, when I met you and then I took some uh, Bible classes through you, and then I, I finally got ordained as pastor last summer, and I thank God that uh, he put you in my life you know, to uh, complete this goal. So, uh, so I'm doing a lot of preaching now and whatnot, you know. So, well, I, th uh, I, I think that's a great example, Will, of um, you. You had a mind. You 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 had in your mindset. This is what I want to do. You had a goal. You have a dream, and you work towards it. And that's that's critical. Good. Yeah, Thanks, Will. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. See, that's pretty much what I wanted to succeed. I just wanted to. Uh, to be a pastor for the last five years and uh, it came true that it happened. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks. Mark? It, before, before I um, say anything, Tony, how much, how much time have we got? How many people are there left? Uh, we got about nine minutes left and uh, we have seven, we have 11 now on here. Wait a minute, that's my eyes going. Boom. Uh, one got off, so we, we have seven participants. Okay. All right. Well, I'll definitely make this brief. And I did have a question, um, but I'll save the question as the last item. But anyway, my name is Mark Safola. Um, like uh, Will and, and Tony, uh, high school was a sort of mediocre experience. And, you know, the sad thing was out of like a class of 300, I finished right in the middle and I did two homework assignments all four years and looking back I thought to myself if I had only tried to be a person of excellence you know what would have been the course for me you know after I graduated so um, those hard questions came to me in my 20s and um, eventually in high school because I really liked the weight room I became a bodybuilder I competed got um, developed a career as a personal trainer um, I love teaching, and I love teaching social sciences, especially world history. So that's what I ended up doing after the, my training days were done. Uh, and I also, like Will, um, I became ordained as a pastor back in 2012. Uh, so, you know, there was just a lot there that it took me a little bit later in life to develop and sort of find out where I believe the Lord you know, wanted me. Uh, so, you know, there was all that, that time sort of floating around and trying this and that. And, um, you know, the tools were there. They just, you know, I didn't take them out of the shed, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> At yeah. certain points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But with that being said, you know, I, I thank you all for listening uh, just for that minute or two. But I did want to ask when we fill in that blank, Tony, to become a person of excellence. And you, I think you know me by now. I'm very analytical. I love the point you made about learning seven things a week. If it was up to me and I had the time, I would learn seven new things every day. I love to read, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when I'm not at my job, that's what I'm usually doing. So um, to become a person of excellence, I need to, let me ask you, do you want a verb or do you want a noun in there? Um, Are we talking about like a, a sort of an intangible characteristic or because I, I, I need to teach. I know that. But how do I become a better teacher? How do I, I think action verb verb? You want an action verb? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, bad. Are you still on? I, I, if you are, would you please unmute yourself? I don't know um, who this is, or I don't. Maybe you, uh, you're with another country in another country, and English may not be your primary language. But thank you for being on, and I hope you'll uh, you'll come back next week as well. Ross, are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, Ross. Uh, let me, uh, let me take, take it. 
turn the camera on here. Sorry. There you go. Kind of uh, multitasking and uh, that's not a thing. You can't do it. Right? You're right. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, in my my young years of wisdom, I understand we all want to uh, strive to be uh, the best that we can be, but. Um, you know, in my earlier years, I didn't understand that there's a process to everything until I got older. And uh, in that process, there's things called failures and risks. And, uh, and so I had to learn that, you know, you're going to fail forward many times, but you have to take the risks to get to where you want to go. And I'm still learning that lesson. Uh, but uh, I, I, I try to strive every day and take those risks, uh, measured risks, uh, I must say. Um, but, uh, you know, what do they say that the most millionaires fail seven times before they become a millionaire? Um, so uh, I'm probably on number six and a half. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just understand that there's there's a process to everything and, and, uh, and listening and learning and, and uh, reading and, and uh, hearing people like you, Tony, uh, is encouraging and knowing that, hey, you're on the right track. You may fall, but, you know, what's important is you're getting back up. And then when you get back up, are you going to turn around and say it's not worth it? Or are you going to just continue to go the direction that you need to go to be successful? So um, I don't think I introduced myself properly. My name is Ross Lytle. Uh, I live in Madison, Wisconsin. I just moved uh, here from uh, Bismarck. My background is marketing. I work for a CBS affiliate here in Madison as a marketing uh, director and creative services director. So uh, I've been with Tony for maybe a year now, year and a half, um, just working with him side by side, uh, trying to lift his arms as much as I can in, in his pursuit uh, for TRLA. And, uh, and I enjoy doing it and, and hope to continue to do it. Thank you, Russ. Thank you. Um, Dave, are you still there? I know you were on. You may have dropped off. Um, I, he may... I, I, he, yeah, it looks like he's off. Okay, okay. Any Anyone else? I, I think we have everybody for right now, for tonight. Um, there may be some people joining us uh, next week, but after that, uh, we're, we're going to kind of close off to anybody else who wants to, who wants to join. And... Uh, but I, I just want to thank you all. I hope that uh, tonight has got you thinking a little bit and getting ready for as, as, as we plan for next week. Again, next week we're going to be looking at the success keys, but they're going to be different for each one of you. There may be some similar things, but again, based on how you answer that question to become a personal person of excellence, I need to what? And... Uh, and Mark, thank you for asking for that clarification because, yeah, I do want action. I want, I want a verb. Um, I, I think it's, uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna build from there. And like I said, each week will be a building time, uh, a building block. But, uh, but I, 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 my goal and my mission is to help you at the end of this to look back and say, you know what, um, I've, I've taken some steps that have helped me to make this a little clearer along my journey on becoming that person of excellence. So I'll close for tonight because we're, we're just about out of time. But thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you. And you. Uh, holler if you have any questions. If not, then I look so forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you, everyone. Okay, good night. Good night. Thank you, Ross.